So you are having trouble killing the final fight in Baldur's Gate 3 on Tactician or Normal or whatever you are playing. Fear not, I have a very easy solution that doesn't require like a specific class or a specific uh, play style decision or anything. Just a few spells and a few things to know. So here is my party composition. Doesn't really matter which classes you bring, but um, you can either choose uh, like a mage or a bard who can upcast invisibility or just everybody drink invisibility potion. I had the mage because I really like Gale, so I just cast upcast invisibility on my whole party, the five uh, creatures that are here. Um, so my four party members and Orpheus. Um, so be in turn based mode, so you have all the turns, uh, the ten turns you can use. Then you just click and start the fight. Then there's like a little conversation where Gale wants to sacrifice himself, but yeah, I just skip it and will show you the final boss room. So here is the final boss room. As you can see, uh, the combat didn't start because my whole party was invisible um, when I arrived here. So I'm just like in the turn based, but not in combat. So uh, you just have to get all the party members with fly or with like sprint and jump, whatever you have, um, to get over the, the crown of castles, so you can start channeling to that. I will just uh, make this a little bit faster because it takes a few turns. Um, so that's why you have to have like invisibility for at least like a few turns, because like when, we have, when you have slow party members like Gale or something, they need like a certain amount of time to get over there. Um, yeah, so like I think three turns or something I will need. And I will see you when everyone is assembled. Um, here you can see how I put my party members. It's not actually the ideal, but I had a little bit luck, as you will see later. Um, ideally, if you have a character who has a very high initiative, who is like most certainly on the top of the initiative order, put him uh, close to the uh, to Orpheus or to the character who actually uses the crown, who will get inside of the portal. So when he jumps in, he will leave this kind of invisibility uh, missing tracer and the two mind flayers who are upstairs here will gonna check and use their ability to see invisibility. So make sure your rogue or if you're the highest initiative character that you have, put it like next to the, the, the crown user so they gonna, uh, he can jump in the portal directly and the two mind flayers are looking for him and not for your party members who are standing in the corners. Before you actually start using the nether stones to channel on the crown, I would put the person using the nether stones. For me, it's Orpheus here, but it might be your main character or whoever you choose um, to put in sneak before you use the nether stones. Uh, that seems to work better than when you don't do it. But I'm actually not sure like uh, what makes it so that the crown opens immediately, the portal opens immediately, um, and sometimes it doesn't. But putting it in sneak seems to work better than not. Here uh, I will use it uh, and you and you will see that I don't need the extra turn, which you normally need when you do the fight, but it just opens immediately um, and starts the cutscene and the person using the crown will get uh, ported immediately inside the, the room of the, the brain. So now my party is spread outside and yeah, as you see, Karlak has the highest initiative of some items and her stats and, and she, she will be first to go in um, to get better assembled i would will wait until everyone is in the room so i will just pass the turn and most of the characters don't know what's happening they just run around cluelessly because yeah <laughs> my party is invisible <laughs> and um yeah, as you will see, there's like two, the two Mind Flayer Arcanist, I think they're called, on top. Um, they will use their Find Invisibility uh, passive or whatever it is. And they gonna check, but because, as I said, Kalak is on the front spot, um, they will look for Kalak. Um, and the other characters can just walk in. Will, uh, in my playthrough here, is just in the corner, so he will not be in the area where they check. So yeah, as I said, I will just wait with everyone um, bef uh, until like all the characters. Oh no, I, I yeah okay, I have some ability, so I can just move in with this character, but I don't want to use any other spells or something. So I have all my actions and bonus actions. Yeah, he's wondering what's happening <laughs> and looking for, but all the characters which he sees are already in, and will in the corner is safe.
so now Will can go in as a last character and everyone is finally assembled. Now that everyone is inside, I will use like all kinds of mobility abilities, misty step and jump and fly and whatever it takes to get everyone together right next to the brain. Now what you want to use um, is either from a wizard that learned it or from a scroll, the sphere of invulnerability and just place it like in a way that your party will be safe, um, like everyone can stack inside. Here I will start, uh, I, I wanted to start but I will save it for the next turn when everyone is assembled and start hitting the brain. So I put everyone inside of the sphere so they don't uh, take damage from the backlash from the brain. Everyone get inside and I will start to use my abilities. Oh yeah, he's not inside, he will also get inside. So everyone is invulnerability, invulnerable. He will gonna use uh, like one of the, the mind flayer. You have, I think you always have like one of these mind flayer transformed characters. He gonna use the the ability that the characters can use actions and bonus actions together um, for the same abilities. And now I will just use everything that I have. Um, of course, everyone is invulnerable. I don't get the damage from backlash. I don't know if I manage to kill it in one turn. But we will see. Yeah, and that is how you beat the final fight without taking any damage or killing anything except the brain. Good luck. legacy. The grand design, once again, ended by my line. The brain is on the cusp of its final thought, and it's taking all of Orpheus's strength to keep it there. An opportunity, perhaps. You glimpse the lifelong destiny promised by your father. Enslave, dominate, ruin. In your father's name, you must seize your rightful claim to the brain, not destroy it. If you do not, then he will flay and shred your mind, so it cannot even comprehend the horrors he will plague you with. What are you doing?
in Baal's name.